Hey chess fans, welcome to this video on the uh, Grigoriev combined method. So in this position white has an extra pawn and the white rook is cutting off the king by uh, two files. Um, but this pawn here is also only on the fourth rank, so it still needs to advance a lot uh, until it can queen. And um, if this rook was here, and this king was here, black could draw because the rook could give frontal checks. Um, there's also a video on this. The method, the defensive method is called um, defensive checks. Um, and the last thing to know is that um, if this pawn advances, um, if the black king can reach a square in front of the pawn, black will have two defensive methods. One is um, the Philidor defense, where this rook um, drops to the back and then gives checks. This is only possible if um, black can achieve that position. And um, if that is not possible, um, black also has the option, if this king is on the long side, to use the active defense by giving checks from the side or dropping back and giving checks from the back. So, uh, with this being said, if this was a lot of theory, um, um, you can review these sort of concepts by the names that I just mentioned, active defense, fiddler defense, um, and uh, frontal checks. But, but now let's have a look at this position. Even though the rook is on the back rank and the king is on the, um, on the third rank, um, and this is the optimal positions to defend, uh, white can win this ending because the king is cut off not by one file but by two files. And the way to win this is the Griogiev combined method. And the combined method starts with king b4. And the first stage of the method is to bring the king to the optimus square on a6. So let's have a look. Um, black wants to defend by giving frontal checks. And king a5, rook c8. Don't forget, rook a8, king b6 allows the king to, um, to block the distant effectiveness of the rook and approach. So in this position, it's better uh, to attack the pawn again. And after um, king b5, rook b8, king a6, the first stage of the Griogiev combined method is reached. The king has reached its optimal square. And the optimal square is here because from here the king can one, move forward to harass the rook, and two, move backward to protect the pawn. And that's why this is the optimal square for the king. The rook is cutting off the black king, and the first step was to bring our king to the best square. And now, if black now attacks the rook, now comes the second stage of the uh, Georgiev method, bringing the rook behind the pawn. So the pawn is attacked by the rook, and at this moment, we allow the king to approach, and we move the rook behind the pawn. And black brings the king forward um, and improves the position of the king. And now king b7 harasses the rook. After rook c5, king b6, we harass the rook. And if now rook c8, we can play c5. And um, black's king, uh, the, the, the pawn has now crossed the midline of the board and black's king is not in front of it. So black will not be able to defend. And if black tries rook h5, we can advance the pawn. And now the king tries to get in front of the pawn to reach the Philidor position. But we can simply play rook d1, allow the king to go in front of the pawn, and play rook g1. And now it becomes clear that um, black cannot reach the Philidor defense position because the rook cannot drop back in time. So, for example, if rook h2, um, if uh, rook h2, um, the problem is that white can give a check here, and after king d7, the pawn advances with check. Um, otherwise, uh, black would love to drop back the rook and then give uh, checks from the back, the Philidor method, and black also cannot reach any active defense method because. Um, this would require the rook 
being able to give checks from the long side. So if this king was not here, but it was here, then black could give checks from the side and then in time drop back and give checks from here and use the active defense. And this is also not possible here. So because of that, even though the king has reached the position in front of the pawn, black will lose. If the rook now uh, drops back to h8 to prevent rook g8, we can advance the pawn. And if the rook now stays on the back rank, we have um, basically reached um, a similar position where black tries a passive defense against a uh, bishop pawn. And as um, we have learned in these endings, this doesn't work because white has to resource rook a1. And um, this is also um, why the Georgiev combined method does not work for the knight pawn because for the knight pawn, um, every, if everything was shifted one, uh, one file to the left, this resource would not, would not be available. And now after um, king b8, white can play uh, c7 check, king c8 and rook a8 check and win. Okay, so this was the um, Georgiev combined method where the king is cut off um, by two files and even if the defending piece is optimally positioned, white will be able to win this ending. Uh, one last thing that I would want to point out, once uh, the king has reached the optimal square and the rook attacks the pawn, we have said second stage bring the rook behind the pawn, there is an alternative uh, as well to protect the rook from the side which is available in this particular position here. If the king attacks the rook, the rook can drop to h4. And if now the king comes close, we can again harass the rook, harass the rook, and then the pawn advances and white also wins in this position. Um, because um, even if the king now advances, the um, long side checks are not available and the active defense is not available for black. But I think um, more generally, especially if you are um, having not a knight pawn, but also um, for a center pawn, um, the more general um, uh, uh, defensive method is rook c1, bringing the rook behind the pawn. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot for your practical chess. Um, and if you like this video, don't forget to click subscribe, so YouTube sends you an update once a new video becomes available. Thanks for watching.